It's said that Kung Fu started in Shaolin. Shaolin Kung Fu is fierce and practical, but it's also broad and meticulous. Apart from being renowned, it teaches the virtues of combat and a basis for Buddhism. And this makes it a very important part of Chinese Kung Fu. What people see nowadays in films is very different from actual Shaolin Kung Fu. The reason for this is because filming requires a lot of exaggerated movements, which look much better on the big screen. In order for people to have a better idea, we allow them inside the temple to promote the long lost Shaolin culture. Shaolin Kung Fu can be traced back to sometime between the North Wei and the North Zhao period. Amid chaos, many generals who were expert fighters took refuge in the Shaolin Temple and turned to Buddha. The Shaolin Kung Fu that most people know comes mainly from movies and other media. This also includes those Kung Fu exhibitions that take place in different countries and cities around the world. It's different from the reality. What is known is that mankind doesn't have the capacity or the knowledge to, to be able to understand the Shaolin Temple in its entirety. Each Kung Fu style is exchanged within the temple, down through the generations, resulting in the unique Shaolin Kung Fu. Shaolin Kung Fu started when monks had to protect themselves. Through the strengthening of their bodies, the monks devised many different styles and techniques of Kung Fu. Kung Fu existed before founder of Master Da Mo, but with him were formed the principles of Zen. So meditation and combat were the same thing. So Shaolin Kung Fu isn't only about fists, but about virtues, about soul, about spirit meditation and other intrinsic qualities. These are the most important. What the secular pupils practice is really quite different from the disciples of the Shaolin Temple. They generally practice superficial Kung Fu. That's because Shaolin Kung Fu is a lot more complicated and diverse, don't you think? They, they focus on outer practice. Our inner practice combines meditation and fists, but what we generally see practice is extrinsic Kung Fu. They don't indulge in Buddhism. In Shaolin Kung Fu, it's crucial to start with basics, erect posture. Posture is made up of many different styles and techniques. When applying the Shaolin fist, it's got to be straight, but not too straight. Bent, but not too bent. If your arm is too straight, it will slow down the speed of your uh, uh, retraction. And if it's too bent, it won't, won't cover the distance. So the, so the moment the fist is extended is very, very crucial. Turning like a screw. For the eyes, hands, arms, waist, legs, feet, balance, breathing, directing one's strength. Even exhalation has strict requirements. Arms bent, but not too bent, nor too straight. Rolling around, flexible movements. Any kick or punch you throw will affect both of the shoulders. Be it the right or the left leg, the shoulder will always move first. This reveals your weakness. Shaolin Kung Fu is necessary and practical because there's, um, there's nothing fancy about it. There was a senior monk named Fu Ju who invited all the martial artists to the Shaolin Temple. Over the course of three years, he studied the strengths and the weaknesses of, of all the masters. He wrote many fist manuals through the practices of generations of, of monks and blending of different styles resulting in Shaolin Kung Fu. 
It has many different varieties. Shaolin martial arts can be divided into two different categories. One is called internal skill, the other external. Internal skill is qigong and cultivating health. Cultivating health is breath control, exercising the diaphragm. The basic difference is between the interior and the exterior fist. What most people see is the little hung fist. Historically, it's, it's the style of fist that all of the monks at the Shaolin Temple have had to practice over the years. And so this is the reason why it's a very common fist and lots of people know about it. Exterior fist is powerful and very rapid. Amongst the Shaolin fists, Little Hung is mandatory for beginners. It's the mother of the 18 fist. Little Hung shows vital parts of the Shaolin fist. From start to finish, it follows a single line. During training, one's gaze must resemble lightning, following the hands with total concentration. During the routine, from beginning to end, the first movement to the last, you move in a straight line and your body resumes its posture. It's a definite outline. Like this. The fist is straight, but not too straight, nor too bent. Finally, when using the fist in attacking, only one arm is extended. The other one is... the other one is always there protecting. Our hat fist is a fine example of the early Shaolin fist. According to the manuals, monk Fu Jiu of the Sung dynasty invented it based on his combat experiences. It's used in both defense and attack. The essence of the Arhat is the extremely distinct exercise of power in it. A series of movements following a rhythm and speed. Unlike the Hung Fist, where each movement is separate, the Arhat Fist is much quicker in, in comparison, more effective with a chain of interrelated movements. Therefore, it's different from the little hung fist. Another crucial feature is that it also requires the monk to achieve the expression and postures. That is to say, the air hat you're practicing, whether happy or sad, must start with the appearance. Drunken boxing must have a drunken expression. Our hat exhibits a joyful appearance. Cannon fist has a series of short steps. The lying lion as dual defense, precise faint technique, and the fists have to be soft and hard. The movements are forceful. When in action, it's as powerful as a tiger, but when standing still, it's as steady as the mountains are. But it's very powerful nevertheless. It's an extremely effective technique. The unique part of cannon fist is being hard, not soft, true, strong, and firm. Accuracy and immense power are typical of the explosive force and strength of the Shaolin fist boxing. Shaolin weaponry complements perfectly traditional styles, and it's a result of mutual exchange. A monk called Fu Jiu invited 18 martial artist masters to stay at the temple. Thereafter, a unique style emerged. And soon, Shaolin weaponry was firmly established. The principal and most famous weapon is the pole. The pole is also the least lethal among all the weapons. Buddhism advocates kindness and forgiving. A person should act morally and not take others' lives. Upholding this philosophy, the Shaolin Temple has regarded the, the pole as the epitome of their weaponry for many years now. Amongst Shaolin weapons, there are many knives. There's the blossom knife, Shaolin dagger, and so on. As for the pole, there's cloud movement and the monkey pole. There are also rare weapons. The Tatmo staff, nine-sectioned whip, and the iron fan.
but without skill, a person gains nothing. Shaolin Kung Fu's skilled fist boxing and variety attack, as well as weaponry. Internal skill is Qigong and health skill. Qigong is posturing, the light and hard Qigong, and cultivating health includes the, the well-known eight-sectioned brocade. The eight-sectioned brocade comes from the first two volumes of Master Dat Mo, relaxation of tendon and marrow cleansing. The first trains one's collateral channels, the second helps dispose of the body's toxins, thus accelerating metabolism both inside and out. These days, fire kung fu, iron sand palm, iron head, and one finger fist are some names that most are familiar with. Formerly, according to Shaolin boxing texts, the Shaolin temple has 36 hard skills and 36 supple skills secretly shared within the monastery without any written records. <laughs> The 72 um, arts of the Shaolin Temple must be practiced by monks of all, of all generations. Of course, not every single monk has to practice the complete 72 arts, but from amongst the 72, the monks have to choose the ones that are most appropriate for themselves. The main reason to have these tests is if if they don't have the mindset to practice this Kung Fu and attain a certain level of thought, then there's just no point in it, in them practicing. Shaolin's 72 arts bring out the potential in everyone. Utilizing the unique knowledge and Zen determination, one practices Kung Fu beyond expectations. For years, the Shaolin Temple has adopted a lot of styles, but many are lost or incomplete. We can only try to analyze and preserve the present ones. If the styles don't undergo creation or development, then only the original will remain. Although much progress in this regard isn't likely, our Shaolin Temple will gradually develop more. Buddhism teaches us to uh, turn the other cheek, when someone hits you or even tries to kill you, I'll endure all I can to disregard it because Shaolun Buddhism teaches all its followers to be kind, to be forgiving, to practice virtue, and most importantly, to punish evil and commemorate good. Our main aim in practicing is for meditation. Meditation. The aim isn't for um, uh, competition. Mm -hmm. You know. The true purpose is to achieve uh, self-contentment. Worshipping Buddha by meditation is our ultimate goal. We must remain completely calm in the face of any events, facing a myriad of matters with this composed attitude. And we must have no malicious thoughts. When Master Datmo arrived at Shaolin, spreading Buddhism and the theory of Zen. He merged martial arts with meditation. Besides martial arts, the aim is refining one's ethics. Shaolin Kung Fu incorporates both and in a broader sense. Today, Shaolin disciples are found across the globe. <laughs> 